Hey there, hi there, hello there, internet dwellers. My name is Orange Lightning, and welcome to another Gamecast review. Today, I will be talking about Galaxy of Pen and Paper, a turn-based RPG romp through the widest reaches of space, the helm led by the overlords of Behold Studios. Got your dice ready? Yes? Because you are going to need them for this role-playing voyage. Galaxy of PMP, is what I'm going to shorten it to, is centred around the D&D games of old, combining point-and-click movement to go from place to place with strategic RPG battle tactics and a few player choices thrown in for giggles. The whole game is pretty much controlled with your trusty mouse, with very little to digest in terms of actual buttons to press, and more about learning the mechanics of combat and mastering your trusty space cadet companions. Fighting is much the core of the gameplay as virtually everything you do will be to affect the upcoming battles, be it moving to the next location, buying items and gadgets for your party, or managing the levels and abilities of each fighter themselves. To start then, you are given two party members. There isn't much customising for them in terms of appearance, but you have full reign to choose which class they will be, species, and personally, best of all, social norm they will adopt. There are a lot of gaming stereotypes in this one, kids. As you progress throughout the campaign, more people can join your party, up to four, but there is the option to make new characters still, and switch them out. Someone not working out how you planned? Bench them in a snazzy cryopod and come back for them later. Each class gives your character different skills to unlock through leveling, and each adventurer can have four skills set at one time. So there is some planning involved to make sure you are covering the bases, unless of course you want a full team of tanks with no healers. Could work. Getting a little closer to the showdowns, everything is turn-based, and you will have a huge range of attacks that can inflict status changes, such as poison, confusion, let's get Pokemon up in here! You can also affect speed, so make sure your enemies have to wait before they can attack, and change their positioning around as well as your own. Every character also has an SP bar for using special moves, and a shield to lessen the damage inflicted that can be improved with gadgets equipped to your team. It is very much party management in every way. But it isn't just ground fights, there are also some really cool, much simpler space battles to be had as well. They centre more around a dice roll. There it is! To determine how many points you have to spend each turn on attacking or healing. They are quick enough to be fun, but mostly don't pose too much of a challenge. To be honest, as a whole, I haven't really experienced masses amounts of challenge through my fighting, but that's probably because I'm a little bit of a grinder. I like to crush my foes. Aside from destroying your enemies, there is not much else for the player to do other than click through the dialogue with the occasional player decision based on class type. But there are a number of different mission types to be unlocked, which can be undertaken at any time, either to have a break from the main story, or just to beef up your guys a little bit with some extra money, loot, experience, and overall influence. The game also touts some mods at you that serve as side quests used to unlock other classes to eventually mess with. I like this as a way of it pointing fun perhaps at unlockable DLC. Leading into the narrative, you actually take on the role of the GM, who does have a lot more customizable features, including popular sci-fi themed outfits to choose from. Might be the closest to being Darth Vader you can get. Your friends are dialing in online to test out this new game in which they act as your players to guide through the story. Enslaved by a money-grubbing alien, your team find themselves in the middle of a turf war, leading to their eventual freedom to explore the skies on a strangely high-tech ship of their own. By completing quests and working with various colourful characters throughout the mix of planets and sectors, they will earn credits, or credibility if you will, and become more famously known. But there is something mysterious about your ship, and not just the gutsy AI with a lack of memory. So, time to gather the ancient precursor artifacts known as DICE, yeah, and find out what the flarf is going on. Of course, with fame and rare artifacts comes enemies, and each new boss poses more challenge than the last. 
But this is a very meta game and the galactic travels and plots are only part of the story. This is very much a game within a game scenario as your band of bros will have to also contend with trolls and beta warriors interfering with your game server. Of course, a great GM remains unfazed and simply weaves these nuisances into the sci-fi world of the game you're playing. And I found the correlation between the RPG game you are playing but also the real world is seamless and chock full of references and comedic banter. I love the stereotypes you can enlist as your friends and I had a blast associating them with my own friends. Galaxy of PMP takes a real crack at 2D pixel animation and it knocks it out of the park. The designs are fantastic, with a ton of detail spliced in. I especially love that whilst within the realm of space, all of your party and GM remain sat at a table at the bottom of the screen to really bring home that feel of classic tabletop gaming from the 90s. Nice little touches are also added in as unlockable bonus items you can equip to your desk that give in-game boosts to money or EXP gained, such as action figures or a box of half a pizza. Although most of the game is in this style, what was interesting is the choice for some 3D animation outside of your spaceship. When gliding around from planet to planet, and also in space confrontations, the design takes to the third dimension. And whilst a little blocky in design, it actually feels like a shout back to the early 3D games of the 90s as well, and ties together surprisingly well. I have seen a number of comments about early crashes in the game, and I was unfortunate to come across one myself. When trying to exit the settings menu, my game froze entirely to the point I had to manually shut it down. But thankfully, it does save automatically very frequently, so I didn't lose any of my playthrough. Other than that though, it has played really well. Loading times are incredibly speedy, aside from moving from one solar system to another, and there can be a small lag in battles when cycling through your team a bit too fast, but nothing game breaking. It has to be said, the soundtrack is absolutely jamming and gives a real arcade feel to the setting. A great mood setter as track shifts from mellow to beat pounding as a boss fight draws near. Also, some marvellous 16-bit sounds to accompany the animations rounding off the package wonderfully. So, is there any fun to be had on this starship? Absolutely! I love this game, it does really well in making it feel personal without too much emphasis on appearance. I was surprised how simply naming a character after one of my buddies and choosing a persona similar to their own, yes, we are all gaming stereotypes, I was able to picture them in the game itself. It may sound odd, but I was digging it and with so many different things you can do to boost your party's standing in the world, there is a lot of personalization to be made. Plus, I have a very basic sense of humour, as I'm sure you're aware of by now, so this game was very punny, ooh, funny to me. It is light-hearted and full of gags, as well as general nostalgia in some sneaky quotes if you can spot them. I was a 90s kid myself, so I can relate to a lot of what you see in this game, and I am a fan. Coming back down to earth to round this off, Galaxy of Pen and Paper is brilliant. I haven't played anything quite like it before, and although I've not yet taken part in any real D&D games, I can see it being something along these lines. With so many different things to check out and the speed and momentum of the game, it is easy to sink hours without even noticing and still wanting more. I think there may be the potential for quests to get a bit stale, as the story is quite cliche in part, but this is all part of the charm, further adding to the homemade RPG vibe it's creating. With much pleasure, I am awarding Galaxy of PMP a worth a buy score. For £10 you can experience this gem and with the quirky style and personal touches there are many ways to play. Thank you so much for tuning in and I hope you enjoyed this review of Galaxy of Pen and Paper. If you want to see more from us here at Gamecast please like and subscribe and keep watching for more awesome gaming content. And if you want to see more from me there are links in the description below to my channel Orange Lightning Playzone and all other social spaces I frequent. So. Take care for now. Bye!